Go ahead. Amen. Well, welcome to New Life in Christ Jesus Church, where Jesus Christ is glorified. Amen. Let us pray. Open up in prayer. Father, we come to you now in the gracious and mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity. We thank you for this time. We thank you, Father, for this day. For this is the day that thou hast made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we bless your name. We know, God, that you are a good God. There is none like you, Father, in all the earth. So, Father, we look to you with confidence, with boldness, and knowing, Lord God, that, that you are watching over your word to perform it in our lives. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for the service today. We thank you, Lord God, that you will speak to our hearts. You will cause our understanding to be enlightened, that we will know what is the hope of your calling and what is the exceeding greatness of your power toward us who believe according to the workings of your mighty power. Now, Father, I ask you that you would anoint every ear to hear, prepare every heart to receive, make my tongue as of a pen of a ready writer to write your word, upon the hearts, upon the mind of your people, that they will know the truth and that the truth shall make them free. And we covenant with you now, Lord, to give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' mighty, majestic name. Amen and amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome to New Life of Christ Jesus Church, where Jesus Christ is glorified. Close the door. Amen. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and get started. But we're going to sing you a song this morning. Amen. We're going to sing a, a song. I forgot to turn my It wasn't it's on now. It wasn't on. Amen. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. You're my comfort in time of need. You're my 
my refuge, you're my rock, you're the one I depend on. You're the road to hope when my light goes dim, when the waves are down, time crashing. You're my anchor in the troubled storm, Almighty God. You're my joy, you're my peace. You're my comfort in time of need. You're my refuge, you're my rock. You're the one I depend on. You're the road to hope when my light goes dim. When the waves of doubt come crashing in. You're my anchor in the troubled storm, almighty God. You're my anchor in the trouble storm, Almighty God. Yeah, Jesus. We worship you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory, glory, glory. Amen. Hallelujah. My anchor. He's my anchor. Glory to God. Hallelujah. How many of you facing storms in your life and you know that without God, you're going to sink? Amen. But you're going you're gonna to hit those big waves and you're going to, and, that, and that, those big waves are going to be so strong for your little boat and you're going you're gonna to tilt your boat and you're going you're gonna to go under. But if you stay connected to the true vine, you're going to be in a ship that won't sink. Amen. He's always, he's, he's always there to protect you. He's, he, he's, he, he's, 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 he rides every waves <laughs> with confidence. <laughs> Amen. Well, we uh, we like to thank you all for coming today. Thank you all for with us being about on the line with us right here today. We thank God for you. You know, uh, Friday night and last night both, we had a night of prayer. Friday night we, we put it on the air. Last night we didn't, we didn't air it. But we had a good time of prayer uh, Friday night and last night, and that, and it was uh, and then we had we had went offline early, but we stayed praying for a, a longer, amen. We just want to get you guys involved, you to with us online. We want to get you involved, so that's why we did it online for a while. But but I want you to know that God, I'm, this month that is coming, November, November, it represents change. The eleventh represent change, amen. So I'm a, I'm expecting change, amen, for New Life in Christ Jesus Church for the month of November. And I'm expecting change for you as well, the children of God. Because we are in this world, but we're not of this world, amen. And the world wants to shut the church down. Amen. But God said no. <laughs> God said no. So we're going to walk with God instead of walking with the world. Amen. And we want you guys to uh, just, just keep us in prayer because you see, uh, especially not just me, but all the pastors, all those that are, that are, that are congregating together, you know, because you see, God said upon this rock, I will build my church. Amen. And he didn't say that the government is going to rule it. Amen. <laughs> He didn't say. He didn't say. He said you got to listen to everything that the government said in order to keep it open. No, if it's up to them, they're gonna they're gonna shut everyone down. Yeah. Because they want they want they want to establish their their kingdom. Amen. You see, they want to establish the world kingdom. <laughs> Amen. But the kingdom of God would not be defeated. Would not would not would not be overtaken. Amen. Amen. So we've been we we started this me this message what uh. December of last year, and folks, listen to me. We we have come right up on December again. Just two months now, two months, and we would have accomplished what God gave us to accomplish. God said this message was for the year, and then, and we preached it the whole year. Amen. You know that God. You know when God gives us a message, then when people think, well, if well, how can I preach that all year? Well, you can preach it. You just got to have a desire to preach it. When God gives you the assignment, you don't just back away from it just because you preach it one time you think that's supposed to be it. The people that need to hear the message, they need they probably need it more than one time. They probably need it more than 12 times. Amen? And so we get it to you every month. 
Four times a month. <laughs> Sometimes if it's, a, if, it's a, if it's a five week of the month, we give you five times a month. <laughs> Amen. But God, I believe that through this teaching, through this, oh my God, through this year, God has caused me to draw closer. I mean, my 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 time with God through this message and the meditating and, and the teaching and the reading and studying, preparing for this message. It really, it really impacts my life in a powerful way. Amen. I, I, I feel like I'm, I, I understand more. I understand more of who he is. And I have a, a better understanding of my purpose here because I know who he is. Amen. See, when you know him, when you know him, amen. See, you can have a, you, you, you can have a, 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 a desire to serve him, but if you don't know him, how are you going to serve him properly? When you can't serve someone that you don't know, you can you can do some things for him. Okay. But if you want to serve him, he want he want he wants your whole undivided attention. He wants your heart. Yes. He wants your mind. He wants your will. He wants your emotions. He wants the whole man, the whole woman, not just part. And this is what I found out in this lesson. Throughout this year. Amen. God want us to do what he said to do. What was that? Go to go ye and do what? In all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. To every creature. Amen. So when we when we when we study this lesson, just ask God, God, what do you want me to receive from this message? Speak to my heart. Help me to understand what I need to receive from this message. Because you see, we all going to receive differently. Because we're all on different uh, levels of, of understanding. Amen. Amen. Just like you might be a school teacher, which you are. Amen. And so your understanding about, about things and is, is a whole lot, could be a lot sharper than someone else that is a, con a construction worker. Like me. <laughs> amen. Or uh, a our, our housekeeper. Amen. Or someone that is, that is, that, that, that's a, on, that's that, that, that can't work. You know? So we have, we all have our ways of understanding. We all have our ways of, of, of getting the information so that we can apply to our life. God wants you to receive the information that you can apply to your life from this message. Amen. From this message. And so as we get into the word today, I pray that you have your heart open so you can hear what the Spirit of God is saying to you as an individual. Amen. Let's go to our, our, our opening text, which is Matthew chapter 16. Amen. Matthew chapter 16. I think I might need my reading glasses on. Amen. That's better. Matthew chapter 16. And I hope all y'all had a good weekend. I had a pretty good weekend. Mm -hmm. Amen. So in Matthew chapter 16, verse number 13 says, And when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I am? You know, we've been asking this question all the whole, a whole, the whole year. God's been asking us this question the whole year. Amen. See, and he wants us, he want us to, to be like Peter. He wants us to get a revelation. He doesn't want us to say, well, I know you, you Jesus. Who don't know you? We all heard about you all our life. See, we heard about him. We heard about him. He, do, he doesn't want us to just hear about him. He wants us to do what? No. He wants to know him. Amen. He wants to know him. Because so he asked his disciples, who do men say that I the son of man am? And, and, and they begin to ask, some say that you are who? John the Baptist and others, and said Jeremiah. And others said you are, are one of the prophets. But he looked at them in the next verse and said, but who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? Amen. You see, now, I can't answer that question for you as an individual. I can't, I can't tell you, I can tell you what I think he is, who I think he is. Amen. But you got to have an understanding in your heart. You got to have a revelation in your heart. You have to. You have to. Oh my God! You have to receive it by the Spirit because 
until you receive it by the Spirit, you will not be able to fulfill the commission that God has given you. Because you're still trying to act in your own motive, in your own uh, in your in your own atmosphere, in your own, in your own, in your in your own abilities. But when you understand who he is by the Spirit, you step outside of your little box. And you step into the spirit realm where he is. Now you are outside of yourself. You don't have to, you know, you that's no you don't have you're not operating with limits placed on you right now. Why? Because you're in the spirit. And in the spirit, there's 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 no there's no limitations. Ask God about it. Because <laughs> there's no limitations on him. Amen. Amen. There was no limitation placed on Jesus when he was here. Amen. When it comes to operating in the things of God, to carry out the, the things that God has given him to accomplish in the earth. God wants us to come to the same realization that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. Amen. Because the Bible says, greater. 1 John 4, 4, is that you are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Amen? And he said, for greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. How many of you know the world need people like you right now to understand that who Christ is so that you can uh, so that you can help bring in the greatest harvest that the world has ever seen? That's what it's all about, folks. He's preparing us for the harvest. He this message is to prepare us for the harvest time. Amen. And I'm not talking about Halloween. Today is Halloween. But I'm not talking about I'm not talking about this, this what they're talking about here. Okay. I'm talking about I'm talking about the, the harvest of souls. Amen. I'm talking about bringing in the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Bringing them, calling them, delivering them to the household of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And when we and when we and when we can do that, we can see what God is saying to us. Because he said, because he said right in verse number 14, he said, He said, but and, and he said unto them, and he says, and they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, and, and some Elias, and others, Jeremiah, one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? You need to be able to answer that question without without wondering. You need to be able to answer that question without even thinking about it. It needs to be something that is tapped into, that have dropped into your spirit that you can just tap into with your with your spirit, and you can understand that Jesus Christ was not just an ordinary man. You can. You tap into that revelation and you'll find out that he was not just someone that's walking around. But he was a, a man that was clothed in the armor and in the righteousness and in the glory of Almighty God. <clears throat> and this is why God wants us to get a revelation of who he is because when we get a revelation of who he is, no weapon that by Oh my shot to Allah my God. No weapon formed against us will prosper. Amen. And every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you can, you can, you, you have the you have the right, you have the authority, you have the ability to condemn. And bring every and, and when they ever gonna come against your mind and try to get you to think otherwise, you can bring every thought into captivity to the Holy Ghost. Into the Lord Jesus Christ. God wants you to see yourself as He created you to see yourself. And He created you to see yourself walking in the image of who He is. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And earth was formed and void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. And God said, Let there be. And verse 26, God said, Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Hmm. Glory to God. See, God created us in his image. He created us in his likeness. And then in verse number 27, he gave man dominion over all the work of his hands. We are his people and the sheep of his pastors. We should enter into his gates with thanksgiving 
and into his courts with praise. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse number 15 says, and he said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? Do you know him today? Do you have a do you have a, a revelation of who he is today in your heart? Can you stand up before a, 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 a world that is going to hell real fast and tell them Jesus Christ, he is the Lord, he is the Savior, he is the deliverer, he is the healer, and he's coming soon? Can you stand up and tell them how much that you appreciate what he did for you on the cross of Calvary without being uh, but without thinking that I, I can't talk to it because I might offend someone. Because nobody want to hear about the cross. You're going to talk, you talk about everything, but you're going to talk about the cross. You're going to stir, some, you're going to stir up a hornet's nest. Because that's where it all started. At. That's where all the power, that's where, that's where God released the power and transformed the power, transferred the power from him to you. Mm. Glory to God. Glory to God. And then and he said, and, and, and I notice what he says right here, because you see, God does God does, he, he doesn't want you to go somewhere and just relax right now. He wants you to be about his business. And that's why it's so important we understand. He said, But who do men say that I who do you say that I am? Because if you don't know who he is, you will never go, you'll never go out to uh, uh, engage in a great commission. And you just won't do it. You you might you might attempt to do it, but as soon as you run up a little bit of opposition, somebody look at you and want to want to look down on you. For then all of a sudden you can say, "Well, I ain't got to do that. I can go back home and sit down and relax. I can put my I can get my lazy boy and watch Lassie." <laughs> no, God don't call, God didn't call you to go home and sit down and watch Lassie. Hey Amen. Not even gun smoke. Okay. <laughs> He wants you, he want, if you want to go sit down in the lazy boy, get your Bible and, and begin to read, begin to study, begin to meditate, begin to, to see who you are. Amen. Look, in, in John, John chapter 14, it, it tells us a lot about who we are. Amen. In, in, in the Gospel of John, it tells us a lot about who we are. Amen. But I like what, I like what we're reading right here. Notice what it said in verse number, verse number 16. Verse number 16 said, And Peter answered and said unto, And Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And, 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 and I like this. I like how Jesus responded. I like how Jesus responded to him. Amen. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon by Jonah. Amen. Blessed art thou, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, amen, upon this rock, upon this rock, I will what? Build. Build my church. I will build my church. Now, when you're talking about a rock, we see that Peter's name means a small stone. Amen. His name means a small stone. Amen. So now, and 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 and, and it said, and it said, what is it? Petra means a small stone. Amen. Then Petra means a foundational stone. Foundational stone. Now, God, I believe what God is saying to us. Because you have understood, because you have received this knowledge, I will use your name as a foundational stone. Or he could have been saying that because of this knowledge, I will cause this word not to fall to the ground, but be established. <clears throat> Upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against. Now, there's a lot of people think that they would, he was would, would talking about he's going to build a, the, the church upon Peter. Saint Peter. Mm -hmm. But that was, that, that's, I don't believe that what God was saying. No. Amen. And, and a lot of them, they, they, they made a monument of Peter because uh, if you look at the Catholic church, they, they still use that today. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. But I don't fault them because see, they go, they, they, they go from the knowledge that they understood from it. And God wants you to receive the knowledge that you can obtain from it so that you can apply what you learn. They apply what they learn. God wants you to apply what you learn. Because when you apply what you learn, God is not going to fault you. God is going to equip you. God's going to empower you. God's going to bring you to a place of, of, of where you can understand more. Amen. How many of you want more of God today? Oh, hallelujah. You want more of God? God is asking you, then just seek my face and learn who I am. <laughs> just, just, just cry out to me. Amen. Just cry out to me and learn who I am. And I will visit you. I will comfort you. I will strengthen you. I will empower you to be the witness that I created you to be from the foundation of the world. Because I said unto you in the early days, whom shall I send and whom will go for us? And you said, here am I, Lord. Send me and I'll go. Amen. Now God doesn't want you to renege on that promise. God doesn't want you to turn back and say, well, I didn't mean it because I, I said it, but I didn't know what I was saying. You know, it was just a mistake. No, God knows that what you said, you meant it from your heart. And the enemy caused you to make you think you made a mistake. No, God already knows where your heart is at. And God wants you to take this word. He wants you to use it. He wants you to use it for his glory. He wants you to grow. He wants you to grow in his grace. Amen. And he wants you to walk in the power of his word. He wants you to walk in the power of his word. You have been given power over all the powers of the enemy by the understanding of who Christ is. Oh, hallelujah. When you understand who Christ is, you understand that God, the God that sent Christ, the same God, oh, the, the same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in you. Yes. In other words, he has empowered you. He has equipped you. He has endued you with power from on high. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God said that, and as I have brought you out, as I have poured into you the revelation knowledge of who I am, I expect you to carry out my commandments. Well, what is the one that we need to be concerned about right now? Let's look at the book of Matthew. Matthew 20, 18. The, very, the very, very one we need to look at first is it's found in the book of Matthew. Amen. Mm -hmm. In the book of Matthew. Are y'all understand what I'm talking about today? Oh, hallelujah. I tell you, I believe that God is speaking to our heart. Oh yeah, the Great Commission, <laughs> and that's found where? Matthew twenty-eight. Are you sure? How do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I want y'all to turn your Bible to Matthew chapter twenty-eight. Amen. And I want you to look right here. Amen. Look right here, verse number, verse number, verse number eighteen. It says. Oh, glory to God. And it says, verse number 18, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power, notice what he said now, all power, because see, he, he talked to these disciples, but if you, when, if you read it over in the book of, over the book of Mark, chapter, start of verse number, chapter 16, start reading verse around about 14, you find out that the disciples still it was questioned because they didn't believe that Jesus Christ had raised, was raised from the dead. We're going to get that. We're going to read that too in a minute. But I just wanted you to know because, you see, right here, he, they, they, they don't question him. Right. But if, if you look at it in the Mark, if you go to Mark first and read it in the book of Mark first, you're going to see that he upbraided them because of their unbelief. Amen. And then he gave, then he gave them the commission to go. Amen. But right here, we just see the commission to go. We're going to, so let's look at it. Let's look at it right here first. Then we're going to go to the book of uh, oh my God, book of Mark, chapter sixteen. But notice what it said right here, verse number eighteen again. And Jesus said, and 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 Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Verse number nineteen said. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. He's commanding us. 
He didn't say, see, who is he, who is he commanding? Those that have a revelation, those that who understand who he is. He's not talking to the world here. He's talking to those that believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. These are the ones that he's talking to right here. Amen. He's not talking to the world. He's talking to the one that received the same revelation that Peter received. Amen. Because now you've been transformed from darkness to light. And the kingdom of God is abiding on the inside of you now. So now God wants you to take that knowledge to the world, to the hurting people, to bring them to the same revelation of knowledge so that they too can be saved, delivered, and set free from the kingdom of darkness and have a, a right to go to heaven when that time comes. Because a lot of them are going to hell. Okay. Just going to church. You need that revelation. You need to know who Jesus is. Notice what it says in verse number, verse number uh, 19 again. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them. Notice what it says in verse number 20. It's very powerful. Yeah. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Amen. See, God wants you to go and teach. He wants you to go and preach. He wants you to go and demonstrate the kingdom of God. Demonstrate the kingdom of God. Not just talking, not just preaching. He wants you to demonstrate. The, how are you going to demonstrate the kingdom of God when you don't know that he is who he said that he is? That's why it tells us in, in the book of Hebrew chapter 11, is that verse number, verse number 6, is that, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that come to God must believe that he is. We must believe that he is who he said he is. We cannot question it. I mean, if we're going to walk in the authority, if we're going to walk in the power, if we're going to walk in the abilities that, that Christ walked in, remember what he said in John chapter 14, verse number 12? He said, verily I say unto you, the works that I do shall you do also, and great works these shall you do, because I go to my Father. If we are going to carry out this great commission, we got to understand that we have been given power to do so. We've been given the power to do so. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So it said, verse number 20, Matthew chapter 28, verse number 20 said, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always. See, God is not going to leave you when you get out there time get, when the enemy start raising up his head. God is not going to leave you. Remember what it said in the book of Isaiah chapter 41, verse number 10? He said, let me just turn that and read it. <laughs> Hey man, hey, you know what? I'm just, I'm just gonna turn that and read it because this is this is so this is so so powerful. This is so powerful. Isaiah 41 and verse number 10. Oh hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Here we go, here we go. He said, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. Oh my God. For I am with thee. Be not dismayed. Or don't be discouraged. Be not dismayed. Amen. For I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And verse number 11. And behold, all they that are ceased against thee shall be ashamed. Shall be ashamed. Amen. They shall be what? Confounded. And they shall become as nothing. Amen. God knows that the moment you take the bold stand and begin to stand on his word, begin to declare what he has said, the word that God has placed in your mouth will override those words that's coming out of their mouth that's coming against you. Because your words are coming out with spirit and power. Amen. And what is it? Quick and powerful and sharper than any to his sword. Because your word is a sword when you're speaking the word of God. The devil won't be able to stop you as you begin to come to the revelation knowledge of who Christ is. Remember how the disciples, once they came to this knowledge in the early church, they turned the Bible, said they turned the world upside down. Upside down. Hallelujah. And the world was so so uh, all set because of these men. They couldn't get them to shut up. 
Well, we cannot but preach. You know, if you have an experience, you can't say nothing different than what was already said or done. But without a revelation, you're going to go along with the crowd. And God doesn't want you to go along with the crowd. God wants you to have an understanding of who Christ is. Because when you understand who Christ is, you will realize that you have authority. You will realize that you've been given power. Remember what he said in the book of Luke chapter 9, verse number 1? Let's look at that real quick. Luke 9, 1. Amen. Luke 9, one was it? And he called his 12 disciples together and he gave them power. He's talking about us, folks. He gave them power and authority. Not just power. He gave them power and authority over all devils. Amen. When you come to the revelation of who Christ is, he's going to give you power and authority over all devils. Amen. Over all devils. And he said, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing will be able to stop you from carrying out the great commission that God has given you. Oh, hallelujah. Ain't that good news? Yes. That is good news. Amen. So when so when your when your when your family is going through difficulties, when you when situations begin to arise in your life, and then you try to figure out, Lord, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Oh, God, what am I going to do? It looks like the devil just taking over. What am I going to do? No, don't be wondering what you're going to do. You just go, you just, you just trust the Lord. Amen. And then you just go lay hands on that person. <laughs> Amen. And then you begin to act like Jesus. <laughs> and, and I command you to come out now in Jesus' name. I command you to come out in Jesus' name. Speak it with authority. When that sickness go to go to attacking your body, don't just sit there and say, "Oh, uh, oh, it's, I get this every time this year come around, every time this season come around." It's always get my. It's always oh my God, I, it's, it's going to be worse this year than it was last year too. I feel it already. <laughs> what a bad confession. Who want to who want to talk like that? Amen. You know when when that, when that, when that flu season come around, say, "Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm always the first one to get it." No. I'm never gonna get it. <laughs> Amen. I'm never gonna get it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna come and agree with that devil. Amen. You know when that when I when I, when the flu season come around, I said, Lord, I thank you, Lord God, that I walk in divine health and healing. Your word, your word will not allow me to be overcome with evil, and I believe flu is evil. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. So I, I stand on the word. I stand on the word regardless of what regardless of what, what, it, what was going through, regardless of what the world is going through. I stand on the word. And God always confirmed the word with signs following. He always confirmed the word with signs following according to Mark chapter 16, verse number 20. Yes. Mark 16, 20. The Lord went with them, working with them, confirming the word with signs following. Amen. God wants to confirm the word with you with signs following. That's why it's so important we understand. We understand what Jesus what Jesus is saying here. Because, you see, when Jesus asked the disciples this question, who the men say that I, the son of man, am, <clears throat> it was at a critical time in life. Jesus was about to go, through, go, into, uh, go into the Gentile country, into the Gentile nation. Amen. It's also part of Israel, but he was going into the area of the Gentile. Amen. Going to the area of the Gentile, and as he was going, as he was going, he, he he wanted to know he wanted to know what was going on first. Amen. So he started asking the people. He started asking the people, "Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am?" Mm -hmm. Amen. He began. They began to ask the people, and all of a sudden, we find out. We find out that in in in, in doing and studying this, we find out that Jesus was standing right there in a place where the kingdom, what he said, the gates of hell, what had been established. Amen. And Jesus asked this question, who do men say that I am? He was talking to those that he most trusted. He was talking to those that he loved. He was talking to those that was, that was walking with him and not against him. He was talking to those that he had poured, that he was pouring himself into. And just like he's doing today, he's pouring himself into you. He's pouring himself into me. And he's asking us the question today, do you know who I am? Because when we come to understand who he is, 
You know what? The, 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 the power that the enemy has put over your mind to cause you to, to sin, to cause you to, to rebel, to cause you to, 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 to look back into your past try, and try to, the devil try to bring you back, to hook you back up with your old past life. God said, when you understand who you are, when you understand who you are, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 will become so real in your heart. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's what? A new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. You've got to understand who you are for this to become a reality in your heart. If you don't understand this, the devil, he's going to come against you. He's going to remind you of your past, and you say, oh, and, if, and he's going to use someone that you really trust to do it. Might even be a lover, might even be a family member, might even be your brother, might even be your sister. Then they're going to start talking to you, 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 you because they, you walk with God, but they don't want to walk with God. So they're going to do everything they can to discourage you, to stop you from walking with God. So they're going to start bringing up your past. Why? Because they want you to be in the same condition that they're in. They want to bring you down to their level. And God said, no. Don't let nobody bring you down to their level. If you love them, you can love them from a distance. You don't have to be around them. Amen. Amen. God has given you an, 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 an ability <clears throat> through the word that as you will honor the word that he has given you, that he has placed in your heart, God is going to raise you up. He's going to bless you beyond your, your, your greatest imagination. And he's going to cause you to see yourself flourishing in life. You walked around this earth all these years. You haven't had much of nothing. But the moment you start obeying God, the moment you start doing what God called you to do, the moment you start keeping your eyes fixed on, focused on the purpose and the goal that God has placed in your heart, you're going to find out that God not only is going to help you to reach that goal, but God is going to also give you everything you need to meet that goal. But you know what, Pastor, I, 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 I come from a poor side of the, of the town and we don't have, we didn't never have much and, 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 and we don't have nothing now. And we, I'm just so poor. That's, a, that's, not, that's not the confession God want to hear from you. God wants you to, God want to hear coming out of your mouth that for my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. For we serve El Shaddai, not El Chipo. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. God wants to meet every need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But you got to understand who Christ Jesus is. If you don't understand who Christ Jesus is, then God can't meet your need in that area. Why? Because you don't have the knowledge of who he is. You got to come to this revelation knowledge of who Christ is. Because God not only wants to meet your need, God wants you to walk in divine health. God wants you to walk in divine health. Divine health is a part of your heritage. Sickness and disease coming upon your body, that's the devil trying to steal your rights. As a child of God, when you come to revelation of who Christ is, you never saw Jesus walk around this earth sick. You don't have to be sick. But Pastor, you know we have got we're gonna die of something. Yeah. <laughs> die of old age. <laughs> you don't have to die sick. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. 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 See, God, God knows exactly where we are. God wants to come. God wants to come out of our closet. God wants the church to come out of the closet. Because, see, as long as you as long as you question your heart, well, I, you know what? I, I'm okay. I'm okay. I, I like this church right because it don't put no responsibility on me. But when I go to Larry Bergen Church. He put the responsibility on me, and I, and I don't like that. That's why I go to this big church. I go to this big church where everybody is, so I don't have to worry about nothing. <laughs> everybody is just happy. <laughs> so I'm a, but if I go to Lab Burger Church, if I go to that small church, Lab Burger Church, he gonna he gonna cause me to to he gonna he gonna, he gonna speak that word. And that word gonna cut me. Gonna gonna make me feel guilty, and I don't like that. See my, my see the, see what the enemy just did. He just shut me down. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Why? Because he don't like what I'm talking about. Amen. He doesn't like what I'm talking about. Amen. Glory to God. But the thing about it is that God wants you, 
God wants you to understand that you have been given power over all the powers of the enemy. And he said, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. You are valuable in the economy of God. You are equipped with all the powers that God had for you to obtain the promises of God. Amen. How are you going to do it? You're going to receive it through faith. Through faith. Through faith we understand that the world's were framed by the word of God. Yes. And through that faith, God has given you the power to overcome, the power to stand, the power to, 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 to lift up, the power to stand firm, the power to acknowledge Jesus is Lord. Woo! Glory to God. Glory to God. Y'all understand what we're talking about today? Because I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what it looks like right now. All things do work together for good to them that love God and for those who are called according to his purpose. It doesn't matter what it looks like. You are at the right place at the right time because God wants to bring you into a new change. November, the, November is the 11th month of the year. When 11, 11 come, release your faith for your change to take place. The 11th month, the 11th date, and then the 11th hour. Your miracle is going to begin. Right then. Release your faith for your breakthrough. The 11th month, the 11th date, and the 11th hour. Change is coming into your life. Change is coming into your life. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, these people here missing it. <laughs> these people on Facebook and YouTube, they missing it right now. Amen. But I'm telling you, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. So get ready, get ready, get ready. Amen. So now let's go to the book of Mark. Let's go to the book of Mark. I told you I'm going to take you over there. Let's go to the book of Mark, chapter, chapter 16. Glory to God. I'll put them things back on. Yeah. <laughs> it won't take what I mean. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Your word is alive and healthy and healing to all our flesh. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mark what? Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just give me another minute, folks. And we'll have y'all back up in, in no time. Because we serve a good God. Amen. Glory to God. 
から。Amen. Amen. Are y'all all right? Because I, I, I know this,、uh, this, the enemy is doing everything he can to, to interfere right now, but God is still on the throne. God is still on the throne. Amen. Glory to his name. And him being still on the throne, that's, that sounds like a winner to me. I'm on the winning team. And so are you. So are you. Amen. We back up. Amen. Amen. So now, in the book of Mark, chapter, in the book of Mark, there we go. Oh, shut up, my guy. In the book of Mark, chapter 16. Glory to God. Are y'all are are understand what I'm saying? Amen. Because, see, when I said, when I said uh, uh, November the 11th, November. It's the 11th month, and then you got the 11th day, and you got the, the 11th hour. I want y'all to release your faith because God is gonna, God is gonna, because the month of November is, is represent change. The 11th month, the 11th represent change. I want y'all to release your faith for what change you believe for in your life, what change you believe for in your household, what change you believe for in your finance, what, what change you believe for in your health. Amen. What change that you're believing for in your family? The 11th, 11th, 11th. That's three 11ths. Amen. The 11th, which is starting tomorrow, and the 11th day of the month, and the 11th hour. That same, it all has to be done on the 11th. On the 11th. Amen. You got 11 in the morning, you got 11 at night. So if you miss it one time, you got to do another chance to get it right. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. But release your faith, and I'm going to be praying with you. I'm going to be praying for you. And I'm going to release my faith in junction with your faith. And we're going to believe God for a breakthrough. Amen. Breakthrough. And I believe, I'm believing God right now. I'm believing God right now that. This church, I'm, I, I, I thought talking to God about it last night. I talked to God about it、uh, Sarah, Friday night and last night while we was in there praying. Amen. We're, we, we're taking authority over that Python spirit trying to choke the word out of this church. We're coming against that thing. Why? Because God did not bring us here. To quit. When things get tough, it's time to get going. Because that's, the, that's not coming from God, that's coming from the enemy. That's why it's so important we understand the revelation of who Jesus is. We got to come to that revelation, folks, as a church. As a church. Because the world is looking for you to have the answer. Because you said that you are a, a Christian. <laughs> and they went to see. And, 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 you know, and you know, there's a lot of religious spirits out there that say they're Christians too. But you go to talk to them about Christ, the true Christ, they don't want to hear what you have to say neither. People like religion rather than. Christianity. That's why Christ is so important that we understand. Because, see, that because you're in church, that doesn't mean you're of the church. Y'all understand what I'm saying? That's why it's so important that we understand it. Because, see, right here, right here in, in Mark chapter 16, in Mark chapter 16, verse number 14, he said, After he appeared, he appeared unto the eleven as they said at meat and upbraided them. With their unbelief. See, they, how many? See, they, they, they walked with Jesus, but they still had problem believing. They still had problem believing. God don't want you to have that problem. You have the word. You know what, what was written. You know what's been said. God has, made it, God has made it so that you wouldn't have to go through what these men have gone through. Amen. Glory to God. In verse, verse number 
first and fifth, verse number 14 again, midway, it says that because they believed not them which had seen him after he had risen. They didn't believe. Verse number 15 said, and he said unto them, go ye what? Into all the world. Once he got, once he got them back on the right track, he gave, he, he, he gave them the commission. And that's why it's so important. If you don't understand who Christ is, you will never take a, advantage of the commission that God has given you. You will never advance. You will never accomplish the things that God has placed you on this earth to accomplish because you're so caught up in what you can do as an individual. And it's not about you at all. It's all about Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. It's all about Christ in you. Amen. Verse number 15 says, And he said unto them, Go ye and into all the world and teach all nations. That ain't what he said, is it? He said, He said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to what? Every creature. Every creature. And then he said, verse number, verse number 60 said, He that believe in is baptized shall be saved, and he that believe not shall be damned. Amen. Shall be damned. Verse number 60 said. And that what he said? How many of you know that people condemn their own life? They condemn their own souls. Not because God had not made a way for them to understand the truth. He made a way for all of us to understand the truth. But what happened is that when we refuse to acknowledge the truth, when we refuse to acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, we are not hurting the people that are trying to help us to understand it. We are condemning our own souls. And that's what, these, that's what, that's what he's saying right here. We can, we, we, we can believe or we can condemn ourselves. Amen. We, we bring condemnation upon our own self. Verse number 17 says, and these signs will follow them that believe. The moment you start believing, you're going to have, you, you, you don't have to run behind signs no more. I'm going to say it again. The moment you start believing, you don't have to run behind signs no more. Because the Bible says right here in verse number 17. And these signs shall do what? Follow, follow them that what? Believe. That believe. Amen. See, as a believer, you don't have to run behind signs. Signs will run behind you. And this is what God wants to bring back into focus in the church in this hour that we're in. I can't wait to see what 2022 is going to be like. I got something going in my spirit that 2022 is going to be a year that's going to cause people, oh my God, it's going to cause people to really refocus. But I'm not going to talk about that right now because we still deal with 2021. But 2020, 2022 is going to be a year that God is going to cause his people to refocus. So many have lost focus. So many have lost focus. And if you lose focus, you won't be able to receive your promise that God gave you. Amen. The woman with the issue of blood, if she had lost her focus, she never would have, she never would have made it to the, to the point of her breakthrough, to the point of her miracle. She never would have been able to touch the hem of his garment. She could have saw those people around him and she said, oh, I can never, oh, she could have, she could have allowed that to, to stop her from focusing. But she didn't. Don't you let your circumstances stop you from focusing. Don't you let your husband, don't you let your wife, don't you let your children stop you from focusing. The devil will use the one that you love to stop you from focusing because they want to bring you to their level. And if you allow yourself to be brought to their level, they're going to take you to hell with them. And it might be, you, you might love them, you might respect them a whole lot, but I don't love, I love my family, I, I respect my family, but they want to go to hell, bye. <laughs> I love my sisters and brothers. Well, if they don't want to serve God, they want to go to hell. They want to keep living a life of rebellion. They want to keep living a life of unforgiveness and, and all this stuff. Bye. Go to hell. Bye. I'm not going with you. I can love you from a distance. <laughs> That's right. I, I'm not going to be around him. You're right. Amen. You got to understand. You, 
I, you got to understand who your family is. Who the real family is. Who God said your family is. Born again. God said your family is them that serve him. Your brother, your sister are those that, 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 that serve God. Amen. So now, folks, let me tell you something. When we understand who Christ is, you're going to find out he, 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 when you find out who Christ really is, it's going to bring a division between you and a lot of people. Amen. Because they're going to start looking at you as a, 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 a radical. <laughs> they're going to start looking at you like a fanatic. Fanatic. You've been reading that Bible too much. Look at how you acted. That's what they're gonna say about you. Why? Because they doesn't want to. I'm gonna put it like this: the devil doesn't want to lose you. But once you begin to step out of that box, once you begin to come out of that comfort zone, you're gonna find out that what God had called you to to walk in, that word is already beginning to light up your path. <laughs> The word is a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. And he calls you to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Amen. And you don't have to fear the evil thereof. Because the Lord is with you. His word and his spirit that will comfort you. He has prepared a table before you in the presence of your enemy. He has anointed your head with oil. Your cup runneth over. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It doesn't matter what it looks like right now. What matters is who you serve right now. Oh, glory to God. Glory, 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 glory. Oh, hallelujah. I'm not making any sense to y'all today. Glory to God. But notice now, we're still in Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. Know what, said to, but know what God said about the believer, verse number 17. He said, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Amen. See, the power is in the name of Jesus, not in, not in, the, not in Larry. Not in Murphy. No. Amen. The power is in the name of Jesus. My job is to get you to focus on Jesus. And it is your job to believe in Jesus. Therefore, you can receive the power that God intended for you to walk in. Because you see, he said, these signs shall follow them that believe. And what's the first sign that's going to follow you? You're going to be able to do what? Cast out, Cast out devils. That's the very first sign. Amen. Because the devil, he's... On every corner, he's looking through the cracks. He's doing everything he can to try to get a demonic stronghold on your mind, your will, your emotions. But when you understand this, when you understand this, that God has given you the power over these things through the name of Jesus Christ, the first thing you should recognize is that when you see that the demonic spirits are move, motivating, uh, are moving, uh, are, are operating in, in a certain arena, arena, God doesn't want you to get scared and run back, go back the other way. God wants you to walk straight. He wants you to walk, keep walking. He wants you to keep walking. And he wants you to walk right, even if you have to walk right in the middle of it. God wants you to keep walking. Then when God says stop, he wants you to stop. When God tells you to take a, a left turn, he wants you to take a, a left. And then when God says speak, he wants you to speak. In the name of Jesus Christ, I break every demonic stronghold. I bind up this wicked and tormented spirit. You bow, you bow, you, 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 you bow your knee right now to the name of Jesus Christ. See, you got to begin to open up your mouth. You got to begin to declare what God is saying to you, regardless of what it if it's popular or not popular, that has nothing to do with it. Your job is to speak. Your job is to speak, but you'll never speak until you come to the knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. Oh, no, Pastor, that's not for me. I'm not a pastor. I just thank God that I can get up and go to church every once in a while. <laughs> no, that's not good enough. That's not good enough. Church, you can go to church anytime you want to, but what if you what what are you going to church for? Are you going to church just to say I've been to church? Are you going to church to learn who you are? You are a child of the Most High God. God called you on. God said in, in, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 9, He said, You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people who've been called out of darkness into His marvelous light. 
That's what God, that's how God sees you and me. Amen. So when the devil comes up against us, he doesn't want us to get a, become afraid. He doesn't want us to, to turn and run the other way. God wants us to hold fast. He wants us to see ourselves walking in his glory. He wants us to see ourselves anointed to cast out the devil. He wants to see our mind renewed with the word of God. He doesn't want to see us conform to this world. And that what he said in Romans chapter 12? Verse number 2, he said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. So if God expects to see that in us, then why are we trying our best to hide it from him? Let's dig in deeper. Let's go deeper into the things of God. How many of you want more of God? If you want more of God, you got to open up. You got to desire it. You got to, take, you got to ask for it. Because God is not going to give someone something that is not asking. He said, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Glory. 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 So as we come to understand what God is doing right now, we can see that God is bringing us to understand that these signs will follow them that believe in, in, in his name. He said, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, they shall not hurt them. He, now I like this part right here. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Who's he talking to? He's talking to them that believe in his name. He's talking to you. He's talking to me. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. And that what he said? Yes. Amen. So when we come to understand who Christ is, then we know that we, and let me tell you something, what he says in John chapter 14, verse number one. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Oh, oh, oh my God. See, God don't want you to be troubled about this thing. He wants you to walk in peace concerning this thing. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, you believe also in me. Amen. God wants you to believe in the word. God wants you to believe in the Lord Jesus. God wants you to believe that what he said is true. God wants you to know that he will not allow his word to fall to the ground. God wants you to know that he will back up everything that he said if you just believe it enough to declare it. If you just believe it enough to declare it, God will back it up. I believe that. I believe that. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when the enemy go to raise up his ugly head against you, don't get upset. Don't throw in the towel. Don't run try to hide. Amen. The Bible said that the devil walking about as a royal lion seeking whom he may devour. Amen. But I like what the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 10, amen, verse number 3. He said, the weapons of our warfare are not caught, but mighty through God through the pulling down the stronghold. Amen. Then he goes on and said, cast See, a lot of us, we allow our imagination to get in the way. We, 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 we allow, oh my God, when, when, when you start operating in the, in the facts of the word, when you start operating in the principles of the word, in the authority of the word, all of a sudden your mind is going to begin to play tricks, play tricks on you. What happened? The devil is starting to come against your mind. He's starting, to, he's starting to work overtime trying to distract you because you see, he knows that he's about to lose a stronghold because now that you understand who you are, God, he's giving you the ability to cast down every vain imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into captivity to the Holy Ghost and to the Lord Jesus Christ. See, when the devil see that you understand that, he see that you also understand that you are not alone. If God is for you, then who can be against you? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Folks, let me tell you something. You are at the verge of, your, of a supernatural breakthrough in your life. You, what the devil has meant for evil concerning you, 
God said, if you would just trust me with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge me, I will direct your path and I will lead you in the path of righteousness, yea, for my name's sake. And I will cause you not to be led by the flesh, but to be led by the spirit. For if you are led by the spirit, you will not, you, you will not be overcome by the lust of the flesh and by the pride of life and by the things of this world. But if you allow me to bring you into that place where I have called you to walk, I will not only give you the ability to stand, but I will empower you to be the light that I've created you to be. And you and you, and you will allow your light to shine brighter and brighter and brighter than ever before. For I say unto you, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and that, that, and that God may be glorified which is in heaven. Your God may be glorified which is in heaven. And God is telling us today right now, prepare for change for change is coming. Change is coming, and I will not allow you to miss out. Those that will trust me, those that will walk right before me, those that will seek me early will find me when they search for me with all their heart. And I will not allow you to go under. I will cause you to go over, said the Lord. Oh, my God. My God. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, when we look to God, when we when we put our trust in God, when we look to God with confidence, God is going to watch over his word, folks. God is going to watch over his word. He's not going to allow, he's not going to allow one jot, one tittle fall to the ground. And every eye is going to be dotted and every T is going to be crossed Thank you, Jesus. properly. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you'll see yourself. You'll see yourself in a place where the peace of God that's a pass of all understanding will begin to rest upon your heart and your mind and everything that the devil has meant for evil, you're going to see yourself dusting yourself off. <laughs> You're going to see yourself, dust yourself off. Yes. Amen. And you're going, to, you're going to begin to walk right out of that situation. You're going to begin to walk right out of that circumstance. And, 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 and you, the limits, the limitations have been placed upon you. All of a sudden, when you take that step of faith, God is going to deliver you from the powers of the enemy who have tried their best to hold you in bondage. God is moving right now on your behalf. God is moving right now on your behalf. God is moving right now on your behalf. So be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For your work is not, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 I'm telling you, folks, the Holy Ghost is speaking to us today. And he's given us He's given us everything that we need if we just obey Him. We're coming out to the last few weeks of the year, folks. The last few weeks of the year. Amen. I'm coming into a place right now in the spirit realm where the eyes of my understanding is being opened because I have been receiving from this teaching all year, the eyes of our understanding being opened, and I began to see and know what is the hope of his calling like never before. You got to begin to see yourself breaking free from your limitations. You got to see yourself stepping out of that box of confinement. God don't want you to be confounded to this world. He wants you to walk free. For he that the sun set free is free indeed. Free indeed. The power that God has given you, He had not taken it back. He has not taken it away from you. It is still yours. It's still yours. Behold, I give unto you power to tread over serpents and over scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from earth, fall from heaven. That's what he said. 
And then he said, I give unto you power. That's right. yep. Don't think that God has forgotten about you. Where you are right now, it's not where you're going to be next week. Spiritually speaking. Your life is coming into a moment of transition. 2001, December the 11th, the 11th hour, the 11th month, and the 11th day, you are going to come into a transitional period in your life. <laughs> Holy Jesus. Hallelujah. Your names are written in heaven. Change is inedible. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Ah! It's coming. Are you ready? Will you accept it? Will you receive it? Father, I have declared that what you have placed upon my heart for today. God, I have given them the revelation that you have shared with me, that you have poured into my spirit, I have poured it into theirs. Now, Father, I'm asking you to let not this word fall to the ground, but let it begin to germinate, let it begin to produce the fruit of its kind. Father, let the word that they have received, Father, bring them to a greater awakening, a knowing that they are the children of the Most High God, and that Jesus has never left them nor forsaken them, but he's walking with them to confirm the word with signs following. God, I thank you for this in the name of Jesus. I bless you, Father, and I glorify your name because, God, I believe that all things do work together for good to them that love you. And we love you, Father. We love you. Let not your word fall to the ground, but let your word bring about the greatest manifestation of your presence. Father, I thank you for it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we give you praise. We give you glory, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Now, Father, I ask you this. One thing on behalf of this people. As the scripture has said, open their eyes of understanding that they may know what is the hope of your calling and what is the exceeding greatness of your power to us who believe according to the workings of your mighty power. Let us see ourselves being transformed into the image of who you are. Let us not be conformed to this world but let us be transformed by the renewing of our mind that we may prove what is that good and acceptable and that perfect will of God. Lord, may your kingdom come in our lives and our hearts be full of your glory and your strength that we will see ourselves walking and not falling. That we will see ourselves children of the most high and not children of the world. That we will see change and not defeat. God, we thank you that we serve a living God. Our God, we know that we serve is not dead. Our God that we serve, he is alive. And we'll always see you as such. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Let's go and prepare to give our offering for the day. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God.
The Bible said, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. www.marybrookenministries.com Ministries.com. Amen. As you give today, give as the Lord has blessed you to give, or as the Lord placed on your heart to give. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. With the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Amen. I believe that God is speaking to our hearts. Amen. We can ready to go into a new year. And I believe that God wants to bring you to a new area. Not only in this life, but I believe God wants to bring you to a new... God wants to give you a raise. I'll put it that way. <laughs> I receive. God wants to give you a raise. Amen. Jesus. So when you honor God with your gifts, your tithe, and your offering, I believe that God is going to honor you. Jesus. And He's going to bless you. He's going to cause you not to experience lack. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because I know when we started this ministry, we didn't have, we, 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 we walked in lack a lot. But God has blessed us. Even though we don't have a big church full, mm -hmm. we don't have a need. We don't struggle. Amen. Because God meet every need mm -hmm. according to his riches and glory. Why? Because we refuse to quit. We refuse to give up. We are holding fast to what he told us to do. And he's been, and he's honored us. He's watched over us. And he's protected us. And we're still here today because of that. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over this gift. I pray over this tithe, this offering, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, that you will supernaturally pour into the lives of those that support this ministry. Father, in the name of Jesus, before this year is out, God, I want them to have a financial breakthrough that they will have a testimony of what you've done because of their obedience to you in the area of seed time and harvest. And Father, I release the angels right now to go to work on their behalf to bring that money into their hands. Supernatural finances. I call it out of the spirit realm into their hands. You said the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. I command the wicked to let go of that finances right now in the name of Jesus. Minister and angels, go forth now and bring those finances into the hand of those that support the house of God. And God, we thank you for it in the name of Jesus. We believe that it's done now and we receive it as such in Jesus' mighty name. Now, Father, as they obey you, bless their families, bless their homes, bless their their, their their, their, their relationship. Bring them, Father, to a place of inner peace. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life before right now, I'm going to give you the opportunity to do so. Amen. If you never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life right now, I'm going to give you the opportunity to do so. God wants to bring you to a place where you will experience his goodness and his mercies. Amen. And that's through Acknowledging Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You may say, well, Pastor, I have like already acknowledged Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. But, Pastor, I, I made some mistakes in my life. I, I, I'm a backslider, and I want to rededicate my life to the Lord. I want to get my heart right with God. And, Pastor, I, I just need help. Would you please pray for me? Yes, I'll pray for you. Amen. And I'm going to pray for you that have never asked Jesus Christ to come to your heart. You, you've been asked to invite Jesus to come to your heart, but... For some reason or other, you, you still have not done it. And God is dealing with your heart today because you know, you know that this season that we're coming into, you know that change is coming and you want to be a part of that change. So, And the only way you're going to be a part of that change is to invite Jesus in. Your change starts the moment you open up your heart to invite Jesus into your life. Amen. Into your heart. Right now. Just believe on him 
who have come and laid down his life and, for, and died for your sin. Amen. He shed his blood for your remission of sin. Let's, I'm going to pray for you. And when I pray for you, I want you to repeat this prayer with me. Those that want to rededicate your life to the Lord, those that want to give your heart to the Lord for the very first time, I want you to pray this prayer with me. But I'm going to pray first, and then I'm going to lead you into this prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, for those that I'm praying for right now, I ask you, Father, that you would touch their hearts like never before. That you would bring them to a place, Father, where they would experience the peace of God that's a passive of all understanding. I want, Father, I'm asking you to let the blindness be lifted from their eyes. And, and Father, let their hearts become pliable once again. And, Father, I break every demonic influence. I cover them with the blood of Jesus right now. Father, that as they make their decision to repent of their sin and to, and to allow you to come into their hearts, Father, I'm asking that you will give them an experience that they will never forget, that they will walk with the rest of the days of their lives. God, I thank you for it now in Jesus' name. If that's you, that going, if you're going to say this prayer with me, then say it with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. Come on, say it with me now. You that are with me by the internet, and you that are here that need to say this prayer, say it with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. Forgive me, Lord. Come into my heart. Create in me a right spirit. And renew in me a clean heart. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. And I believe that you died for my sin. Now today, I acknowledge my sin. And I thank you for what you did for me on Calvary. I received the sacrifice that you made for me. Come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. Thank you for saving me. If that's you, you said that simple prayer right now. I believe that the angels in heaven are rejoicing because of you. You made one of the greatest decisions that you could ever make by acknowledging Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior or by rededicating your life to him and to his service. We love you with a love that cannot be denied. And we want to pray with you even more. Go to my website, LarryBurgerMinistries.com. Send me your prayer request, amen, and let me know how can we uh, agree with you and what can we agree with you on, amen. Go to my website, LarryBurgerMinistries.com. Send me your prayer request, and we're going to come in agreement with you. We want to pray with you. We love you, amen. So, so do that for us, amen. If you're here today, you need special prayer right now. I'll pray for you right now. Anyone need prayer, I'll pray for you right now. Come on, it's okay. Thank you, Lord. What's her name? Okay. Petra, okay. Father, in the name of Jesus. As my sister comes standing in a proxy for her friend, Petra. Father, we bind the spirit of death off of her right now in the name of Jesus. We loose the grips of Satan off of her right now in the name of Jesus. We apply the blood of Jesus from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. And Father, we call her back to consciousness. We call her back to herself. We call her back into her body right now in the name of Jesus. We break this spirit of death off of her right now in the name of Jesus. And God, we release the spirit of life. We release the spirit of life in Christ Jesus to rest upon her heart and her mind. God, we thank you and we praise you for it, Father. Now, Lord God, I ask you that you would supernaturally pull out your spirit upon her, Father. And not on her own heart, Father, but upon my dear sister right now that stands in the gap for her. Father, be to just touch her heart, touch her life. And then, Father, touch her family, touch her, her husband. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release that anointing right now by faith in Jesus' name. And I declare and decree supernatural manifestation of your glory upon this young lady's heart that's in the hospital and upon my dear sister's heart and upon her husband. In Jesus' name, amen. Under the Messiah. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Anybody else? One prayer. Come on. Come on, bro. Everybody else shy. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my brother. I thank you, Lord God, that your hand rests upon him. And Father, I ask you to reveal to him the whereabouts of his glasses. Holy Spirit, you know where they are. They are not lost. They are just displaced, misplaced. 
Now, Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to direct him to those glasses <laughs> in the name of Jesus. I rebuke this demon that has come against his, his eyesight, that has come against his vision. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Father, I declare that my brother walked in divine health and healing. I declare, Father, that no weapon formed against him prospers, Lord God. I declare and decree, Father, in the name of Jesus, that God, today, his heart is functioning properly. I declare it, and I decree it now, in Jesus' name. Anybody else? Come on, come on, come on, sister. Let me pray for you. Just walk around here. Don't step on his head. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I have been praying for you, Jesse, because I've been fighting for his life for a couple of years. Maybe three years. He's been having strokes and different things. But have you led him to the Lord yet? I am definitely working on it. I believe he's a, he is a believer. Okay. He's Catholic. That's what you believe for. No, he has an appointment to get a new kidney. Oh, see that? Because he's been on dialysis, too, for a couple of years, about three, three years, I guess. Okay. And I, I support him a lot, you know, because he, he really needs a day. He's coming to break and fall down now very well. And I really want to see him get the kidney on 11-11. Okay. So he's going to the okay. doctor. Hey, Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come in agreement right now, Father, for this transfer of kidneys on the 11th month and the 11th day of the month. In the name of Jesus, it's already written in black and white. So, Father, there, let there be no distractions. Let there be no disturbance. Father, let it come forth. Let it be a matching kidney, Father, one that will work properly. Father, we thank you for it right now. And, Father, we pray for the health of the giver, the donor. We pray, Father, that that donor will remain strong in Jesus' mighty name. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. Oh, God, now, Father, I bless my dear sister. I ask you, Father, that you will continue to bless her, bring her to a place, Father, of inner peace. Father, let her walk in the divine presence of who you are in these last days, God. Father, I bless her now in Jesus' name for her kind heart. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Amen. Anybody else? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my brother. I thank you, Lord God, that your hand rests upon him. I thank you, Father, for everything that the devil has meant for evil concerning him, concerning his family, Lord God. Father, we pray, God, that you will move supernaturally upon his life, upon his family, upon his children, upon his wife, God. Bring them to a place, Father, where they will understand, that they will experience, Father, Breakthrough in their life, breakthrough in their heart, loosening them from the powers of the grips of Satan, setting them free, Father, from demonic influence of false belief. In Jesus' name, God, I release the faith of God to rest upon this family. I release the will of God to rest upon this family. In Jesus' name, under the Messiah. In Jesus' name, we thank you that it's done now. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Amen, 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 Amen. 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 Glory to Satan. Amen. Come on. Let me pray for you. No, no. The prayer needs to pray. Who? What is it for? The guy was asking for his daughter. Her name is Jaina. It's over here. Yeah. Just prayer. Um, pray for my daughter, Gina, come to home. Pray for Gina? With my, uh, yeah, with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for Gina right now. In the name of Jesus, we call her home. In the name of Jesus, we break every demonic influence. We cancel every demonic assignment. We break the spirit of witchcraft off of her life right now. In the name of Jesus. And off of her heart right now. In the name of Jesus. Father, we call Gina free. We declare Gina be free now. In Jesus' name. And Father, we claim Gina's soul for the kingdom of God. We declare, Father, that Gina will acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and turn her heart toward home. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. Anybody else? Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. 
Oh, 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 praying Barosa Gita Basa Della Baka. Father, we pray for we pray for Daddy Sunshine, Father, her family. In the name of Jesus. We pray for a faithful servant in the name of Jesus. We lift them up before you, Father. And God, we declare in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, that everything that you have meant for them to receive in this life, Father, God, the devil will not be able to hold it back. The devil will have to loose it from them right now in Jesus' name. And God, we declare, Father, divine health. We declare divine health and healing. We rebuke the spirit of infirmity, sickness, and disease. We rebuke the spirit of cancer in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. Your word is alive. Your word is healthy. Your word is working in us the hope of glory right now in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Did I cover everything? Amen, amen, amen. Well, God bless you all. We love you. Amen. Don't forget to join us tonight. We have a powerful service tonight. Amen. I believe that God's going to deliver some people tonight. I believe the captain's going to be set free tonight. Amen. So come expecting. Come believing. Come expecting. Amen. Because I believe that God, see, I believe God has already elevated this ministry to a new level in the spirit right now. I believe that with all my heart. I, I'm, I, I'm experiencing it. I see it. It's happening. Amen. And God want to do the same thing for you. And Father, I pray for the Shepherd family. God bless you, Sister Shirley Shepherd. We see you viewing us right now online. And the baby shepherd, we pray, we pray for you. We ask God's hand to continue to rest upon you. We know that God is working right now on your behalf to bring you to a place of inner strength. Sister Shirley, we release that anointing right now upon you in love. Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. We love you. Hope to see you again soon. God bless. Bye-bye. See you next time.